The Holocaust on commemorative postage stamps. The iconography is familiar. The time frame, 1933 to 1945. The day Auschwitz was liberated, the 27th of January, 1945. Barbed wire, concrete fence posts, striped uniforms, Jewish yellow stars. And the pain and despair of imprisonment. Austrians have no doubts as to when their pain began, 11th of March 1938, when Hitler demanded the Austrian Chancellor hand over power or face an invasion. With neither France nor Britain willing to offer help, Schussnigg resigned and the next day German troops entered Austria and a day later Austria was part of Nazi Germany. If the Austrians thought that things could only get better, Kristallnacht, the pogrom against Jews carried out by stormtroopers and civilians throughout Nazi Germany was to shatter any illusions. Over November the 9th and the 10th, 1938, in an orgy of violence, over 250 synagogues were torched, 7,000 Jewish businesses vandalised, about 100 Jews murdered, and some 30,000 sent to concentration camps. For many, the night of broken glass was the start of the Holocaust. In the 10 months after Kristallnacht, more than 115,000 Jews emigrated from the Reich. Four months before, President Roosevelt had convened the Ebian Conference to discuss Europe's refugee problem. 32 countries met, but only the Dominican Republic offered to take up to 100,000 Jews. In the end, only about 700 German Jews were able to make it to Sosua, but given livestock and land. Voluntary emigration was followed by forced segregation. The Germans occupied Lodz a week after the invasion of Poland on September 1st, 1939, changed its name to Littmannstadt, and in early February 1940 established a ghetto for 160,000 Jews. The ghetto issued stamps with images of Chaim Romkowski, head of the Judenrat. Romkowski promoted collaboration with the Germans, believing that if Jews in the ghetto were a productive force, it would be possible to draw out their time and minimise death. But in August 1944, Rumkowski and his family were put on the last transport to Auschwitz, where he was beaten to death by Jewish Sonderkommando inmates in revenge for his role in the Holocaust. In 1941, the Nazis established a ghetto for the Jews of Bohemia and Moravia in the fortress of Theresienstadt, where they interned elderly Jews and several thousand Jews from the Netherlands and Denmark. Residents could receive parcels every two months, provided the sender first obtained an admission stamp and affixed it to the wrapper before posting. These three stamps were issued in 1968 with drawings done by children held in Theresienstadt, formerly called Terezin, before the arrival of the Nazis. Each stamp has the name and age of the child who drew the picture. The Flower Pot by Jiri Schlesinger, aged 11. Butterflies by Kitty Brunerova, aged 11. Jew and Guard by Jiri Bertler, aged 10. Although in practice the ghetto served as a transit camp, it was also presented as a model Jewish settlement for propaganda purposes. Nevertheless, 35,440 Jews died in the ghetto and 88,000 were deported to killing centres. Deportation followed segregation. This Macedonian stamp marks the 75th anniversary of the deportation of almost all the country's Jewish population. A total of 7,144 Jews from the capital Skopje and the cities of Bitola and Stip were confined to ghettos in March 1943 before being deported to the Treblinka killing centre in Poland. 98% of them died there. In 1939, Germany and the USSR had signed the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, dividing Europe into spheres of influence. The first to suffer from the pact were the Bessarabians and Bukovinians when the Soviets began mass deportations. Over June the 12th and 13th, 1941, almost 30,000 Romanians were deported in cattle wagons to Siberian labour camps. The Nazi invasion on 9th of April 1941 would be the beginning of the end for the Jewish community of Thessaloniki. The Nazis attempted to wipe out every trace of a Jewish presence in the city, sending 96%, 50,000 people to the killing centre of Auschwitz-Birkenau. In all, 86% of all the Jews in Greece were murdered. Braindonk and Mechelen camps in Belgium served as collection centres for deportations. Braindonk Fortress was used from September 1940 to detain political dissidents, captured resistance members and Jews. 
Mechelen was established in March 1942 at a former army barracks, Caserne Dossin, now a museum. It was the only transit camp in Belgium, and between the 4th of August 1942 and the 31st of July 1944, 28 trains left from near the camp and deported over 25,000 people. Only 1,240 Belgian Jews survived the Holocaust. Westerbork was a Nazi refugee detention and transit camp in northeast Netherlands, set up to assemble Romani and Dutch Jews for transport to concentration camps. From 1942 to 1945, 107,000 people passed through the camp on 93 outgoing trains. This stamp poignantly lists who might have been on those trains. Transport 19, the last train for Sobibor Killing Centre, left Westerbork on July 20, 1943. In the cattle cars were 2,209 men, women and children. There were no survivors. The last train for Auschwitz left Westerbork on September 3, 1944. On it were Anne Frank and her family. Only 5,200 deportees survived Westerbork, most of them in Theresienstadt or Bergen-Belsen. Of the 340,000 Jews living in France in 1940, some 76,000, most of them from Paris, among them 11,000 children were deported by train to the east. Deportation from France started in 1942 and lasted until July 1944, even as the Allies began to liberate France. The last transport left France in August 1944, while the battle for Paris was being fought. Most of the French Jews were murdered in Auschwitz, and of all the 76,000 Jews deported from France to the killing centres in the east, only about 2,500 survived. The government of Vichy France, the French state railway SNCF, and the French police participated in the roundup and deportation. And so we come to stamps recognising specific locations. Killing centres like Auschwitz, slave labour camps like Mauthausen, and concentration camps like Dachau. The Hungarian stamp features the memorial at Mauthausen. The Czech stamp names the Pinker Synagogue, the second oldest surviving synagogue in Prague, now administered by the Jewish Museum to commemorate 78,000 Czech Jewish victims of the Shoah. The stamp lists ghettos, killing centres, labour camps, and even the Auschwitz subcamp at Glibitza. Italy, Austria, Albania, France and Belgium have all issued stamps featuring concentration camps. The locations are unspecific, but the iconography is familiar. Watchtowers, barbed wire, concrete fences and outstretched hands. Other stamps are location specific and none more so than these from Poland featuring Auschwitz-Birkenau, the largest of the Nazi concentration camps and killing centres. Between 1942 and 1944, as part of the final solution of the Jewish question, Auschwitz became the principal centre for the destruction of the Jewish population of Europe. Over a million men, women and children lost their lives there. Treblinka was a killing centre in a forest northeast of Warsaw. The camp operated between July 1942 and October 1943, and more Jews were killed there than at any other Nazi extermination camp apart from Auschwitz. Over 700,000 Jews were killed in its gas chambers, along with 2,000 Romani people. Majdanek was built by the SS outside the city of Lublin in Poland. It had seven gas chambers, two wooden gallows and some 227 structures in all, putting it amongst the largest of Nazi-run concentration camps. Initially purposed for forced labour rather than extermination, the camp was used to kill people on an industrial scale during Operation Reinhardt. This macabre design from 1946 Poland features an allegory of death as a skeleton dressed in a Nazi SS uniform spreading Zyklon B poison gas over Majdanek. The stamp created public outrage and many felt it offended the memory of the thousands of people murdered there by the Germans. It was withdrawn about two months after its first issue. Of the more than two million Jewish people killed during Operation Reinhardt, some 60,000 Jews were most certainly exterminated at Majdanek. Buchenwald was established near Weimar, Germany in July 1937. Prisoners came from all over Europe and the Soviet Union. Jews, Poles and other Slavs, the mentally ill and physically disabled, political prisoners, Romani people, Freemasons and prisoners of war. Insufficient food and poor conditions, as well as deliberate executions, 
led to 56,545 deaths of the 280,000 prisoners who passed through the camp and its 139 subcamps. Langensen's Wieberger in Saxony was one such subcamp. The camp was liberated on April the 11th by US troops from the 8th Armored Division who discovered about 1,500 ill and dying inmates. They were transferred to a nearby military hospital and residents from Langenstein were ordered to bury the dead in mass graves. Mittelbau Dora was located near Nordhausen in Thuringia, Germany. Established in late summer 1943 as another subcamp of Buchenwald, it supplied slave labour from many eastern countries occupied by Germany for manufacturing the V-2 rocket and the V-1 flying bomb. In 1945, most of the surviving inmates were evacuated by the SS and on the 11th of April 1945, US troops freed the remainder. Ravensbrück was the largest concentration camp for women in the German Reich. Set up in 1938, it was designed for 6,000 inmates, but by 1945 housed more than 36,000. About 50,000 women died at Ravensbrück from disease, starvation, overwork and despair. The camp was liberated by the Soviet Army on April the 30th, 1945. Some 3,500 female prisoners were still alive. Another of the earliest camps was Sachsenhausen, 20 miles north of Berlin, used from 1936 till the end of the war. A slave labour camp, prisoners were treated harshly, fed sparingly and killed openly. The memorial obelisk contains 18 red triangles, the badge given to political prisoners. Mauthausen was a camp 12 miles east of Linz in Austria and the main camp of a group with nearly 100 further subcamps located throughout Austria and southern Germany. Between 1938 and 1945, around 190,000 people from over 40 different nations were imprisoned here. At least 90,000 of them died. There was a rock quarry in Mauthausen at the base of the Stairs of Death. Prisoners were forced to carry blocks of stone, often weighing as much as 50 kilograms, up the stairs one behind the other. Exhausted prisoners collapsed in front of the others and fell, creating a domino effect all the way down the stairs. SS guards would also force prisoners to race up the stairs carrying blocks of stone. Those who survived would often be placed in a line-up at the edge of a cliff known as the parachutist wall. At gunpoint, each prisoner would have the option of being shot or pushing the prisoner in front of him off the cliff. The most notorious Holocaust atrocity was the massacre of Jews that took place on September the 29th and 30th, 1941, in a ravine outside the Ukrainian capital of Kiev. At Babi Yar, 33,771 Jews were killed in a single operation. Few photographs exist of the massacre, and the image behind this Ukrainian stamp actually shows Jewish women and children from the Mizoch ghetto, 230 miles west of Kiev, being lined up prior to their murder in October 1942. Killings at Babi Yar continued from 1941 onwards, and it's estimated that between 100,000 and 150,000 more lives were ended there. The assassination of SS General Reinhard Heydrich by Czech resistance fighters in Prague resulted in a Nazi commemorative stamp for the so-called hangman on the 28th of May 1943 and a more graphic representation of his death by the Czech Republic in 2017. The assassination provoked a brutal backlash in which hundreds died. The Czechs will never forget what happened at Lidice, the mining village not far from Prague, targeted for reprisal following the assassination. Stamps have been issued virtually every five years since the event beginning with the 1947 stamp entitled Grief. On the 10th of June 1942, armoured cars had rolled into Lidice and 192 men and boys aged 16 and above were captured and shot. 60 women and 88 children were rounded up and sent off by cattle truck to Ravensbrück. Lidice was razed to the ground. Similar brutal treatment was handed out to a nearby hamlet called Lezaki. On the 24th of June, approximately 500 SS troops and police removed all the inhabitants and destroyed the village. 33 adults, men and women, were shot. Exactly two years to the day after Lidice, on the 10th of June 1944, the village of oradour sur glan in Nazi-occupied France was also destroyed when 642 of its inhabitants, including non-combatant women and children, were massacred by a German Waffen-SS company. A possible reason? Resistance activity in the area in support of the Normandy invasion. 
Oridor remains a ruin to this day. Isieux was the site of a Jewish orphanage in France. On the 6th of April 1944, three vehicles pulled up in front of the orphanage and Gestapo, under the direction of the Butcher of Lyon, Klaus Barbie, forcibly removed 44 children and seven supervisors. The terrified children were taken directly to Drancy, then put onto the first available train to Poland. 42 children and five adults were gassed at Auschwitz. The Warsaw Ghetto Uprising was a Jewish insurrection in Warsaw's ghetto in 1943. The Polish stamp features the monument for that revolt and the Israeli stamp commemorates 70 years since the insurrection with a portrait of Pawel Frankel, commander of Zob, the Jewish combat organization. The revolt began on the 19th of April when the ghetto refused to surrender to SS Brigade Führer Jürgen Strope, who then ordered the burning of the ghetto block by block ending on the 16th of May. A total of 13,000 Jews died, about half of them burned alive or suffocated. The ghetto uprising of 1943 should not be confused with the Warsaw Uprising of 1944. This was a major operation in the summer of 1944 by the Polish Resistance Home Army to liberate Warsaw from the Germans. These stamps are based on real photographs. One commemorates the boys and girls of the Polish scouts who ran a postal service during the uprising some of whom were killed by German snipers while delivering mail. It's estimated that about 16,000 members of the Polish resistance were killed and about 6,000 badly wounded. House-to-house -house clearances and mass evictions of entire neighbourhoods discovered any Jews being hidden by Poles. Occupied Denmark was the site of the most famous and complete rescue operation in Nazi-controlled Europe. In late summer 1943, when Nazis planned to deport Denmark's nearly 8,000 Jews, a German businessman warned Danish authorities of the impending operation scheduled for the beginning of October. With the help of their non-Jewish neighbours and friends, virtually all the Danish Jews went into hiding, and during the following days, Danish fishermen clandestinely ferried some 7,200 Jews to safety in neutral Sweden. But not every Dane managed to escape to Sweden and close to 500 were deported to Theresienstadt. Rescue was to come for them too as part of the White Buses operation. Swedish nobleman Folk Bernadot negotiated the release of about 31,000 prisoners from German concentration camps, including 423 Danish Jews from Theresienstadt. They were released on the 14th of April 1945 and transported to neutral Sweden. As the Allies advanced across Europe, they came across concentration camps and killing centres filled with sick and starving prisoners. The first major camp to be liberated was Majdanek by the Soviets in July 1944. Americans liberated Buchenwald, Mittelbau Dora, Flossenburg, Dachau and Mauthausen in April 1945. British forces liberated camps in northern Germany, including Neuengamme and Bergen-Belsen. Liberation is depicted on commemorative postage stamps sees the snapping of chains, the breaking down of doors and fences, the cutting of barbed wire, doves, flowers, rainbows, and for many, the chance of a new dawn. Belgium has issued many stamps featuring the liberation of the camps, and for good reason. Under the German occupation, about 70,000 Jews lived in Belgium, primarily in Antwerp and Brussels. Many were deported to internment camps in southern France as early as May 1940, but then between 1942 and 1944, nearly 25,000 Jews were deported from Belgium to Auschwitz. Most were murdered there. The Red Army liberated the Auschwitz camp complex on January the 27th, 1945. Many of the inmates had already been moved westward in a succession of death marches. Only about 7,000 prisoners remained in the three camps, Auschwitz, Birkenau and Monowitz. Buchenwald was liberated by US troops of the 9th Armored Infantry Battalion on the 11th of April 1945. They freed 21,000 prisoners and were given a hero's welcome, with the emaciated survivors somehow finding the strength to throw some liberators into the air in celebration. On April the 29th, 1945, the US Army liberated Dachau, the first concentration camp established by Germany's Nazi regime back in 1933. They found 30,000 survivors most severely emaciated. Over the 12 years of its use, the Dachau administration had recorded over 200,000 prisoners and 32,000 deaths. Thousands more remain undocumented. 
Liberation for many was a mixed blessing. Many inmates, especially those from the East, had lost everything, including hope. Others, like these Belgians, could plan to return home. Holocaust Remembrance Day is on the 27th of January, the day Auschwitz-Birkenau was liberated by the Red Army in 1945. Many countries around the world issue stamps to commemorate the tragedy of the Holocaust and the genocide that resulted in the deaths of 6 million Jews and 11 million others. We will leave the last word to the Poles and two of their more recent Holocaust Remembrance stamps.